Hello, hello, and welcome to another Two Network Match Report with me, Adam. It's finished at St James's Park, it's finished Newcastle United 1, Arsenal 2. It's yet another 2 1 defeat against a top six side um, this season. It was. It was very, very much a cliché game of two halves. Um, we know that a lot of our players had been, well, not a lot, but a few of our players had been um, involved in international football over the last sort of couple of weeks. We had Shelby and Ritchie who were both fighting to get fit for, for, for starting players, but it was, it was Shelby who missed out in the end and, 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 and Isaac Hayden came in for his, for his place. Hosselu started ahead of Rondon, who had been playing over in Panama, so lots of travelling, lots of jet lag. I mean, this is just what's to be expected of international football. It's, it's very frustrating because I feel like had this game been a week down the line, I think we would have. I think we really could have done something. I mean, Yedlin was a maybe, but to be honest, had we played either Manke or Steri against Aubameyang, like I, I, I think it would have been. I think the game would have been over probably first half. Um, I thought in the first half we defended really well. We were really solid and we, we really nullified their threats. I mean, they didn't get a shot on target until the second half. In fact, they managed two shots on target in the whole of the game and they scored from both of them. The, the free kick in the 48th, 49th minute from Grant Jacker, which... I felt the free... I felt the foul um, that was drawn... That created that free kick was was very soft. I mean, I need to see it again. Maybe it was a foul, but watching it in the stands, it felt it felt like it had been bought somewhat, and, and and the referee was convinced by it. But ultimately, when it comes to that kind of range, that kind of free kick ability, you can't legislate for it tactically. Like if someone could score from that position, from that far out. From a central position, which from free kick perspectives is, is is even more tricky and more complex. I don't think there's anything. I couldn't really find fault in anything that we did as far as the free kick free kick goes. I thought Dubravka lined his wall up. He was all the side at the other side. It was just a very very good free kick. And Granit Xhaka, for all his um, deficiencies and his um, his um, well, he doesn't he, he, he doesn't do a I don't think he's a I don't think he's a top six midfielder, but what he does do well and what he can do is strike from range and his set pieces are very good. And it was proven today and after such a solid first half, it was very disappointing to come out of the second half and I think it was a huge sucker punch to to, 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 to concede that goal. I mean we hammered them for corners in the first half, but I mean that was our only in terms of sustained pressure, I think it was only Newcastle who were able to um, create that in the first half. We we peppered we peppered them and we, we, we closed them down. As a given how Arsenal have played the last few weeks, um, obviously before the international break, you look at the game against Cardiff and Cardiff really got at them, got in their faces, and gave them a lot of problems to have to deal with. And I. Th just thought we didn't do that enough. I think one occasion Czech passed it out for a corner kick where we'd pressured them. And, you know, you had Murphy, who I think in terms of high pressing is probably one of the best that we have. You have Perez, who's obviously sitting a bit deeper than, than the main striker, but he's the other person who can do that. Richie doesn't have the pace, but he has the work rate. And Hoslu, again, very much doesn't have the pace, but he has the work rate. And I just think we just lacked cutting edge really. We had we had all these corners and we weren't able to capitalise on any of them. Hayden started at a key, I don't know why he wasn't in the squad, I assume injury or just completely um lack of fitness from international break. I don't, although I thought he was <laughs> I thought he was quitting. I don't I don't know why. I don't know why he wasn't even included in the squad. Um, but if Shelby wasn't fit to start, then obviously Hayden was the person to bring in, and I dreaded it when I saw the team sheet. I just thought, Christ, like their, their midfield is weak, but that the fact that Shelby wasn't fit to start is just ah, it's 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 really really irritating because I think it would have been a very very different game. And as much as like we didn't 
as much as we felt comfortable in the first half, we didn't, in open play, we didn't really create anything um, significant. And yes, we nullified them, but do you know what happened at half time? They got a rocket up their arse from Unai Emery and they actually turned up second half. So the way the second half went was pretty much how I expected the whole of the game to go. So I don't think it was anything necessarily that we did poorly in the second half, although I think. I think work rate and effort, we, we, we seemed tired and we seemed bereft of ideas and urgency, which was very disappointing, I think. But Lascelles went off at half-time because he looked to be hobbling the, the, the entirety of the first half. Kieran Clark came on. But that didn't seem to change the game, per se. I just, I just think Arsenal decided to turn up and take the game to us. I think Unai Emery said they aren't, they've had, you know, Newcastle have had um, the ball in the final third, but we haven't done anything with it. We've had loads of corners. We haven't done anything with it. We haven't, we haven't really we haven't put any shots on target ourselves in the first half either. So you and I, Emery, just said to them, well, he, he put on Lucas Torreira for Gendouzi, and, and, and you know, it was a very tight, very much in this, similar to what I saw as Jorginho in the Chelsea game, tidy passer, energetic, um, it just keeps things clean and smart and Arsenal just decided to play like suddenly in the first half Yedlin was nullify, nullifying um, Aubameyang and actually saw a couple of times Dummett and Yedlin swap over because maybe maybe at first I thought it was because I thought they found themselves in you know in the wrong position and just had to stay there until the passage of play had ended but it happened in the second half as well so I wondered whether there was something tactical in that but we just didn't, again, same old story, we just didn't create enough. And I thought, strange one with uh, Jacob Murphy because I thought he was trying to be positive and he gets a lot of groans and sighs and criticism from the fans when he when he doesn't do what everybody expects him to do or wants him to do. Yet when Matt Ritchie might do make similar mistakes, he doesn't get half the, the criticism that, that, that Jacob Murphy gets. I think it's really unfair and I think... As a fan base, if we want these players, I mean, these are the players we have. We want them. Surely, we want to nurture them and encourage them and to motivate them. And 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 groaning every time he tries to do something a bit more direct. You know, direct players are gonna concede possession because they're trying to find a killer pass or a killer ball that could cr create a goal. Richie's crossing, I thought, was really good today, but he did make mistakes and. For whatever reason, the, the crowd didn't seem to jump on his back as much as Murphy, and uh, that annoyed me, I think. I, th I, thought, I thought that was really unfair. I don't know what you guys thought, but um, Kennedy came on. <sighs> a few nice touches, but I, I don't remember him doing anything particularly meaningful in the game. Muto came on for Richie. Eventually, Perez was pushed out right, and, you know, the, the two chances that we did have were from the the right hand side the, the, the first one was um, Perez who'd been pushed out there in, in favour of, of Richie when Muto came on and he delivered a, a wonderful ball to, over to Hosselu who had scored headers against Tottenham and scored a header against Chelsea as well at St James's Park already this season and those two one defeats and <sighs> straight a check straight down his throat easy tip over it was one for the cameras like it, he he aims that slightly to the side, like either corner, it, it, it's a goal, and we've suddenly got a bit more time, but it, it wasn't a bit. I'm not, I'm not going to criticise him because he got into the position and it was a great ball over and it could have very easily been him. But against teams, when we turn nil down against teams like that, you've got to take those chances. You, you, just, you just have to. You have to. You can't, you can't afford to miss those and still expect to get anything out of the game, especially when that was our first shot on target and you're talking like, this is like the 80th minute or something. So... The goal, our eventual goal came from the similar right hand side and it was actually, you know, really pushing forward and Federico Fernandez, um, who I did back to get a start today uh, alongside Lascelles, found himself on the right wing and whipped a ball in and Kieran Clark, for whatever reason, had, had found himself around the six yard box and he, he bundled a header past, past Petr Cech and it was no less... Um, I guess we deserved for for the first half of pressure, but it was just too little, too late, and it's another two-one defeat. I mean, I mentioned that we'd 
we'd conceded very uh, very early on in the second half, and the time that we actually scored in the the, the, the time that Arsenal actually finished <laughs> the, the the second goal from Arsenal seemed to uh, seemed to just finish us off. And that was on the hour mark, 58 minutes. So Shaka scored in the 49th, Ozil in the in the in the 58th. And again, for for whatever reason, a, a, a switch flicked in, in at, at half time, and they were cutting through us so easily. We'd been so solid, and the ball came out to Ozil after a bit a bit of you know a bit of pinball in the box, and the ball came out to Ozil, who was again central. And he fired it. He didn't even hit it that hard, but he sort of fired it through a crowd. And Dubravka didn't see it till the last minute, and and, and suddenly it's 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 two nil. That felt a bit undeserved because I think, but but to an extent it felt undeserved. But then to another extent, it just showed that a team like Arsenal has the quality just to pull out the stops and when potency is needed, when when positive attacking players needed and just clinical finishing is required they were able to do so and i said clarks was the was the consolation goal but it was it was you know arsenal in the whole game dominated of course they, they had about 63% possession which is a lot a lot less than chelsea had so maybe we improved that in that respect and we we looked to be on the front foot in the first half. So there's positives to take. We weren't completely ransacked by Arsenal. Even when we're 2-0 down, it didn't, the 2-0 two -nil, two -nil felt a little bit of injustice, I, I, I thought, in terms of how the game had gone after an hour, given that we'd been on top for 45 minutes of that hour. But, as I said, it's, it's about being, as Rafa says, it's not about your possession, it's, it's about actually being effective with that possession and we weren't in the first half. Certainly didn't even have the chance to be effective with the possession because we didn't really have it in the second half. And Arsenal just put us to the, store, to the sword. And You know, you could, you could look at that result and say, well, we didn't have Shelby, we didn't have Rondon, we didn't have Lascelles for half of it. Um, was Yedlin fatigued? Um... Kennedy's off form. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's time to start panicking by any by any stretch. Like we've played a lot of very good, very good sides. The very best teams in the league. We've played four of them, and we've, you know, we've we've been we've been pretty unlucky. Um, we've been pretty unlucky with most of them. So it it, it is what it is. Um, it is what it is. Um, it's a it's a narrow defeat, and we need to take the positives that we weren't ransacked. And maybe, maybe Rafa thought towards the end. I mean, I think the cells injury ruined the substitution slightly. Um, but with Crystal Palace away next week, he'll need Shelby. He'll need Rondon. And I'm hoping that Lascelles isn't going to be injured for very long either because he's a player who can command a, a, a back four and we, and we need his leadership, you know. So it's it's very, very frustrating uh, to think that we... But looking back on the game, the first half was the, was the time to, to make our mark and take our chance and we failed to do so. But when you've got a front three of... You know, you've got Murphy, who's inexperienced at the top level. You've got Hosselu, who's inexperienced at the top level. You've got Richie, who put a few good balls in. Um, Perez, who didn't seem top form either. Who Perez can be a hit and miss player as well. What we need is Muto to be fully, fully fit, fully match fit and be pushing Perez. We need Rondon to just be in that team, full stop. We need Kennedy to show us why we were, we were, we were desperate to sign him um, permanently this summer for all of Richie's strengths um, just sometimes lacks the quality and, and the pace to sort of breach a defence you know it was just a, a and, and, and in fairness to, to Isaac Hayden um, he had a sound game in term, terms of his interceptions and his ball recoveries he was sort of first and second on the pitch in, uh, respectively so he, he did well deputising but we are such a different team when we have Shelby and Rondon in there and 
to lose again narrowly is is very frustrating and is it's it is what it is. But we can't we can't get we can't get too annoyed. Annoyed. Unfortunately, we can't get too annoyed because it's it's Newcastle against a lesser side. A better side beat us today. Yes, they didn't really turn up in the first half, but it doesn't matter because it's what happens over ninety minutes that counts. So you've got you've got um, a, a two one defeat against Arsenal. We've got a two one defeat against Man City. We've got a two one defeat against Chelsea, and we've got a two one defeat against Spurs as well. So we've we've kind of come out the the, the the other side. I'd like to think with you know relative pride intact and integrity intact and. What we need to do is build upon these. So if we can limit a team like Arsenal with the likes of Lacazette, Aubameyang, Ozil, Ramsey, these kind of players who play such penetrative football, who can break lines and find chances, if we can limit them to two shots on target, again with Chelsea, three shots on target, if we play the percentages like that tactically, we're going to fare a lot better against the lesser sides in theory. Crystal Palace will be a really tough fixture, don't get us wrong. But they're a lot more hit and miss than the top teams will be. So we could really, really do, even if it's a draw against Palace, it would kickstart our season. I just think we, we need a catalyst. We need something to, to get going, to get the, to, to get the, the fire in our bellies. Because at the minute, it, it, it feels like we're stagnant a little bit and we're in danger of slipping a bit. I, I don't want to panic yet. Because I think we've had exceedingly difficult fixtures. But moving forward, Palace and Leicester, we need to be looking at four points from those two games. And, and reassess where we are. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. I've been Adam of the Two Network. Please subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already done so. Subscribe down there. I'm on SoundCloud and iTunes as well, so please subscribe and rate me there. We're on Facebook at The Two Network 1892 and on Twitter at The Two Network. Please follow and please say hello as well and let, you, let us know what you think. I've been out on The Two Network. Thanks very much for watching. It's another defeat, but hopefully we'll get a better result down the capital next Saturday. I've been Adam of The Two Network. Bye, bye. <laughs>